Hey guys, today I want to talk about the Choir of One. This is the new exotic that just dropped. And I know a lot of other creators have covered it, but I think they're kind of overhyping, at least based on their thumbnails. I'm just kidding, I love these guys. Llama, please no take away content creator role in Discord, please. But yeah, back to Choir of One. And let's go ahead and get into all the information about it. So first of all, we'll go ahead and look at the good sides, what it's actually good for, and what I think its niche is, because I do think it definitely has a reason to be in the game, and it is useful for some things. You can kind of think of it as a rocket sidearm. It has a pretty similar damage profile to rocket sidearms whenever you're ADS with it. It has a lot more total damage whenever you are ADS as well, so that's a benefit, and that's sort of, I think, where it being exotic, that's like what justifies it being exotic instead of just using a rocket sidearm. It has way more ammo. But it also has this secondary mode where when you're hip firing, it shoots five bullets at once. And this doesn't quite do five times as much damage. According to Aegis's short that he put out, it does 2.7 times more damage, which is still quite a bit more damage than what it was otherwise. That is a very significant damage increase. That's basically a 170% damage buff at the cost of more ammo, which is the highest damage buff in the game, other than Lucky Pants whenever it's fully stacked. And so it sort of turns this weapon into this weird hybrid weapon. Basically, you can use it as sort of a Suedo rocket sidearm, but whenever you're hip firing, you can also use it as kind of a mid shotgun. So you can think of it as a rocket sidearm at base, but then add on the exoticness and the exotic perk that it adds to it to make it better than just being a legendary is that it has a ton of ammo for being a rocket sidearm. And it has this shotgun mode, which can be pretty helpful. I also want to say, I saw a tweet going around that was saying that the shotgun mode on this is like 4th Horseman. It is nowhere near as good as 4th Horseman. Aegis actually already put up the exact numbers for the DPS on both modes, and it is about one third of the rate of damage as what 4th Horseman is. But I don't really think it's competing for that slot because 4th Horseman is extremely heavily specialized, and this is anything but. This is just a versatile weapon, basically. Now, that being said, being what it is, I think this is a very good double special weapon. Basically, you can run this, and then you could use something like a sniper, and then you basically have a rocket sidearm, a questionable shotgun, and a sniper in two weapon slots, and then you can have whatever you want in your heavy as well. Normally, I end up running something like Ergo Sum and a trench barrel shotgun, but now I could run this and use a sniper and have a much safer loadout for any sort of harder content where that might not work in. But now let's go ahead and look at the bad sides of the weapon, but really quickly before that, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you like the video so far, or if you regularly watch my content but aren't subscribed, I would really appreciate if you hit that button. Also leave a comment, I love to read them, and I do read every single one of them. And I also heart and respond to all of them, unless I think you were being a jerk. But yeah, getting back to the video, let's go ahead and talk about the negative sides of this weapon, and there are unfortunately quite a few, and we're going to talk about these things that I think a lot of people might not realize yet. The first one is that if you're using the hip fire mode, because it uses 5 ammo at once, it basically loses all of that insane total damage I was talking about if you're using it too often. So you have to be very sparing with the ammo, and you also have to realize that the 5 shot mode has an extremely slow travel time. Like, if you have an eager edge sword on, you can shoot it and get ahead of the projectile just by swinging your sword, which I don't think there's any other projectile in the game you can do that with. It is very slow, and it also waves around, so it's basically just completely inaccurate against anything that's not perfectly still or right in front of you. That said, you can counter this a little bit, especially in Rome content, by being on Prismatic Warlock and using stasis turrets, because obviously if an enemy is frozen, they're not going to be moving around, and you can point the gun right at them, no problem, and they'll just take the shots. I ran the weapon through Onslaught once and went all the way to round 50 with absolutely random people and came out on top of Agclear and all the other stats. And the gun overall felt decent, but I was basically just constantly running out of ammo because you kind of need to use the five burst mode quite a bit in that mode because there's just a lot of the yellow bars. But I do think in an activity where there's a few less majors, it would definitely be a very nice option. It's just really weird to try to compare it to other weapons because it's extremely unique. It's not like anything we've had before in the game functionally. I think overall it's not going to be all that good just because I think you could just run a shotgun and a rocket pistol and just, you know, you don't really need other weapons with that, you still have a heavy slot. But for certain specific loadouts, especially in harder content where you might need more specialized legendary weapons, this could definitely fill in a very useful slot for that. And lastly, I just want to talk about it for like raid DPS purposes. Pretty much, it's only going to have any use for this in the hipfire mode, which means automatically you're losing a lot of situations where it even works, because you need a boss that basically sits perfectly still, 
and you also have to be a certain distance away where the projectiles are converging into the boss all at the same spot and are not in their spread out state since they kind of wave in and out like that. You wanna make sure that you're at a certain distance where all of the projectiles will hit the boss at the same time. And that right there immediately makes it insanely niche. But even just looking at the numbers, if you're using a stupid boss like the Templar that doesn't really move, well, it's still not all that amazing. It's got a pretty decent amount of total damage, so it's okay as like a backup weapon. But it's DPS, it just doesn't do damage all that quickly still. Coming in at about 144k DPS, which pretty much leaves it neck and neck with Still Hunt while not using Celestial. There are other weapons that I think are a lot better for pretty much any situation, or at least in situations they're good in. For example, Merciless can get 167,000 DPS, and it doesn't need a Petus to get that number. It's even more if you are proccing a Petus. Or my favorite, Cloud Strike, which has about 166k DPS, so very similar, except overall much more total damage than Merciless, so definitely an upside there. And I mean, look, if you really need a benchmark for it, it's worse than Thunderlord, which I know it's a special weapon, but it's kind of just a good benchmark. If a weapon's not as good as Thunderlord, you probably shouldn't be using it. And for some more comparisons, even outside of raid DPS, but also in raid DPS, regular shotguns are still better. Even when using something like Rain of Fire, which would benefit shotguns just as much as this gun, really, shotguns just output more damage. Simple as that. And lastly, let's talk about some weapons that I think serve a similar purpose to this one. The main one we're going to talk about is going to be Ergo Sum. And Ergo Sum has been all over my channel lately. It's kind of ridiculous. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm specifically talking about the Art Conductor version of Ergo Sum. It is just completely overtuned right now, and it's one of the best weapons in the game, even in the hardest content in the game, like Grandmaster Strikes. You can go through almost any Grandmaster Strike in the game extremely aggressively using Ergo Sum. Even just last week, I was doing the Exodus Crash using Ergo Sum, a shotgun, and a machine gun. And on some of the easier strikes, like Fallen Saber, I won't even use a machine gun. I'll just use a rocket launcher because I don't even need that versatility. I just want the damage. And the reason why I think it's so similar is because just like this weapon, it can kind of do two different weapons jobs. Obviously, it's got the ridiculous amount of ag clear whenever you use the perk, the Art Conductor perk, and that is super good and it kills all the ads, but it doesn't do very much major damage. But since it is still a sword, you can just smack bad guys with the sword, and it still does decent major damage. And it's definitely not as good at that as something like an actual major bursting weapon, like a shotgun or mountaintop with recombination or something like that. But it's still better than most primaries, and it's better than most ag clear weapons, like waveframe grenade launchers, for example. But that's basically all just an extra benefit on top of being a ridiculously good ag clear weapon. And unfortunately, this auto rifle isn't really ridiculously good at any one thing. It's just kind of versatile. And lately, the meta has been shifting more and more into specifically specialized weapons that do one thing really well, and just using three different weapons that do completely different things really, really well. Like an easier roam content, for example, you basically use some kind of major bursting special weapon like a trench barrel shotgun or mountaintop, then you'd use some kind of ag clear weapon, probably in the energy slot, like Ergo Sum, and then you'd use an eager edge sword in your third weapon as your utility weapon to be able to go fast. And that might change depending on the activity, especially if you're in a raid, obviously you want your DPS weapon to be a heavy, and you might even want a second DPS weapon. But overall, the point is that most weapons that are in the meta are specifically very good at a specific thing. And unfortunately, I think that's going to be the only real downfall of this weapon. I think it still definitely has merits, but it's just not all it's cracked up to be. It's definitely not the new best weapon in the game by any stretch. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It is much appreciated. Bye-bye.